Hey guys, my name is Jason with S&J Forest Products. And on today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, on a lot of my videos, I've done some sawmilling and some uh, logging. And on today's video, we're going to take a look at uh, reforestation and some replanting stuff that I did this spring, as well as a technique called air layering, where we're going to try and clone some of the trees we have on our property here and uh, get them ready to plant uh, either this coming spring or the next year after we get them in pots. So uh, my dad's over here getting ready to uh, get the air layering stuff together. So let's take a look, see what he's doing. And then we'll go take a look at some of the trees and we'll get some air layering going. Can you walk us through your process here? Sure. Well, air layering is taking a live branch on a tree, girdling it to peel the bark off, and then wrapping it with wet, this is actually ground coconut shell, uh, and wrapping it with wet, coconut shell in a bag and folding it over and tying it around the branch where you've taken the bark off. And in, depending on the species, a number of months, it will propagate roots that uh, grow out into the, the ground coconut. And then you can lop off the branch, plant it in a nursery pot, get the roots grown uh, big and healthy and then you can have a three to five foot long whip of a cloned tree that then you can plant in the ground um, saving sometimes years of uh, nursery propagation and planting out. As I mentioned earlier we did some planting here this spring and we'll go around and take a look at a couple of the trees. Uh, this is one that we replanted. This is a uh, a western red cedar and when we got them they were I don't know about you know somewhere in here so they were pretty good sized little seedlings and uh, they've put on a little bit of growth this year but I had some friends come out in March and uh, gave them some pizza and some beer and we went around and planted some trees and they've actually done pretty well we've had some some loss um, that we can take a look at but uh, this cedar here got planted in March we had the posts so we could see where they were and then I went and I collared them all with these blue collars to help with brows and um, protect them from the elements and stuff. And I came back in July and I actually took all the collars off and just raised them up the pole here because uh, what had happened on some of them is we had a terrible, terrible heat wave here in the Pacific Northwest in June and it just cooked the leader on some of them. The leader just turned brown and died. Um, a lot of the tips of the branches died. And I, I think some of that obviously was just the heat, but some of it was being confined in this cone and it was like an extra little greenhouse and it just really overheated the plants. Um, but this one's doing great. Uh, again, it's a cedar taken off. Uh, so let's go take a look at some of the other ones we have and some of the ones that didn't make it. Here's another cedar and I flagged them actually. The, the orange means they've died so I can tell which ones I need to replant. Uh, the live ones are in blue, but here's a, here's a cedar that just didn't make it at all. And as you can see, it's just all brown. It has died. Um, and I think some of that had to do with getting that cone on it in the early season and it just got too hot. Um, so the cedars are, they're, they're doing okay. Uh, but the dug firs and the grand firs and the hemlocks seem to have survived uh, a little bit better. Here's a little dug fir. And you can kind of see what I talk, was talking about. Here's the leader, and it got all brown, and all the needles fell off the top. It's kind of got um, screwed up there on top. So I may have to come up and bring this one up as the new leader and just clip that off. But we'll let it go. It survived. Uh, the, the needles down here on the bottom turned all brown again in the heat. But we've got some new growth here on the branches. And uh, it survived the first heat wave. The first year is kind of the first critical one. And so hopefully this one next year will get a two or three foot leader on it. And uh, it'll just start taking off. Here's a hemlock that had some real problems. This is a better example where the, the, the whole leader just died because of the heat. Uh, the tree's still alive. It's not doing great. Um, but we're into end of August now in September and hopefully the rain start, it gets some moisture, cools down and hopefully something like this can recover. Um, but the hemlocks, you know, they're, they're more shade tolerant trees, like it cooler, like it wetter. So they didn't do as well, uh, as the grands and the dugs. 
here's a little grand fur. And these ones have actually done the best. Uh, let's see if I can get it here. But you see it's got a nice long leader, nine, 10 inches long there. It's got buds on it for next year there. And all the branches look pretty good. They're all green, none of them brown. Doesn't look like any of the needles have dropped off. So the grands have actually done the best on this site. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to, to have some of these trees come up and get up and grow up and um, shade out some of this. You can see the reed canary grass. I've just been fighting it, trying to keep my trees open up to the sun. But I want to get, you can see all the poles out there. I want to get the trees to grow up, shade all this out, and uh, kind of get it back to a forest. So in the next 30, 40, 50 years, you know, my kids can have something to come back in and cut, you know, probably for their retirement or thin out or something. So um, we'll just get these things planted and watch how they go. But now let's go take a look at the air layering process and uh, we'll do some air layering and see if we can get some, some clones of some of these already existing trees that we have. Uh, and because, I mean, I know they grow well on the site. They're doing good. And we, if we can get them cloned and get them five or uh, six feet tall right off some of the branches, then we're, we're way ahead and we're up above all this canary grass and stuff and hopefully above the deer and um, we can get them, get them going and get them a head start rather than planting these little tiny, little tiny seedlings that have to get three, four, five years before they get up six feet tall. This is actually prime sphagnum peat moss, so. Oh, for air layering? Yeah. Yeah, the guys in in uh, the UK pay mega bucks for this stuff, and they swear by it. But huh. I don't use it, but you got to gather some up. Okay, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna take this. Gee, this branch is probably six, eight feet long. Has some nice green growth at the at the lateral tip, and we're gonna come back here and girdle it, take the bark off and then <clears throat> scrape down the slimy cambium layer, wrap it with a wet mass of uh, air layering pouch, bind it with some twine, and come back when the roots have grown and we'll have a tree. So you just take a trim knife and cut the bark off. Yep. And usually it's about twice the diameter, so I'll come out about here. And then if it's nice and green inside still, this will peel off nicely. It may be too late in the year. So we have a special tool for this. Okay. And what's the, the prime the prime time of year for this? Is March? Um, usually anywhere just before uh, it starts to, uh, sap starts to flow in the spring. Okay. All the way through uh, probably June or July. So we're out of season, but we're, this is when we're doing it. So we're going to try it. And I think it'll just keep over the winter. I mean, ah, okay. we may not have anything this fall, but it'll have a head start when it's ready to go in the in the in the spring. So okay. it's just regular pair of pliers. And boy, this works real slick. Oh yeah, look at that. So we got the bark off. This is uh, the sapwood underneath, and on on top of the sapwood, there is still a cambium layer, and. If you don't get the cambium layer off, it works to knit everything back together and uh, it, it doesn't force the roots. So we're going to actually scar this up enough to, to get some fiber off of that sapwood. Clean that off a little bit. Hey, let me hold my hand up. I can't get it focused. Oh, yeah. There you oh, go. I got the ferns in the background real nice, but... So now we've got the we've got the cambium layer all all uh, scraped off down into a little bit of the sapwood fiber, which is just fine. So we know everything's good, ready to go with our 
um, rooting compound, and then our air layer. So what we're going to do Reach in here and get our finger wet. Reach in here and get a dose of the rooting powder, which is just a little tiny bit of hormone, uh, less than 1% in talcum powder. And then we're going to wipe that around above the cut and right at the cut. And you're even up on the bark, huh? The roots will actually come out of the bark here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we got that part. Then we get the twine ready. We're going to take this. These are really sharp and it's not very far to your palm, so you got to be careful. But with a sharp trim knife, you just cut it right down about the middle of the ground coconut fiber. Open it up a little and get this part right about in the middle because there will be some roots come up out up here. Just squeegee it around. Get all the air out. And that's nice, just soaking wet, soppy. As much water as it'll hold. Okay. And then you get the twine kind of in the middle. Okay, that'll hold it on there. And then you come up over here, wrap it nice and tight so it... <laughs> oh, phone call. We're busy. So we got it wrapped around the middle. We get down one end. We wrap it nice and tight so it doesn't dry out, come across this way, this end nice and tight, and then come back to the tail on our loop, wrap it once and twice so it doesn't loosen. And there we go, come back four to six months and we should have some roots. Now some people say you poke a little hole in the bottom so that any excess water runs out. I think that's personal preference, but. And so this thing, since we're kind of off season, typically what happens is you, you air layer them in the spring and then you let them go a year? Or when do you harvest them and put them in a pot? Um, really depends on the species. Some of the succulents or tropical plants will have a nice root ball in a couple of months. Mm. I think these uh, northwest conifers, it may be four to six months. Mm. So I think if you do it in March, you may be able to harvest in September. Okay. We've got a couple of experiments going now where we're, we uh, put the pouch on in July We'll see what they look like in September. And uh, so this has all the water in it, and you don't need to come back and water it or anything. It's it's isolated there. It's going to be happy its whole time. It'll be happy its whole time. Okay. And then what do you do when you come and harvest? Uh, you can actually see the roots through the plastic to make sure. You just come back and lop it off here, stick it in a bucket of water, take it back to the nursery, pull it apart, Put it in, this would probably be a 
a two gallon nursery pot and let it grow a nice healthy root ball and then plant it then plant next it year or whenever it's ready um, I'd like to be able to plant it in the fall so if mm. if we can if we can air layer in March harvest in July get a root ball by September October still ha it's not to the freeze yet plant them all the hot weather has passed they get a nice uh, established in the fall nice established more in the spring before the hot weather comes and you got a fighting chance for for uh, success how big a branch can you do oh well I there are YouTube videos of branches of five and six inch uh, diameter um, on uh, it was actually a Japanese maple that was more than 20 feet tall okay took him three years to get enough of a root ball that he felt comfortable cutting it off um, but yeah I I don't know what the limit is. Right. But we're going to do mostly one to two inch or half inch to two inch kind of thing. Sure. Uh, yeah. Enough that you can get a, a tall enough tree to get above the brush. And, you know, if you can if you can get this um, layered and and rooted, planted, it's a six or seven foot tall tree mm -hmm. uh, right you go, off the bat in one season. So. And if you were to go buy it at the nursery, it'd be 50 bucks or $25 or more. Depends on where you are. Yeah, <laughs> and how many you buy. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, let's get a couple more under our belt here. and Do a few. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, it took us about 10, 15 minutes, but we got quite a few of these cedar branches. There's one there. That one's air-layered. Got one here. Got one up there. Down there. A few over there. So we're just going to... Experiment here. We're going to go do a couple of dug firs as well. We've done uh, a couple spruces and a couple of hardwoods. So we're just going to check back on these in about six months and see how things are going. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching our video. And uh, I'll make a follow-up video here in a little while. And we'll check back on these things and see if we can turn them into trees. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.